Today, this is going to be like a, in the lab, we're going to do like a practice problem session, if you will, or problem solving session. So this is basically uh, chapter five, right? Reduction of multiple subsystems. So before we get started with this, do you have any questions particularly? So hopefully you all had a chance to look at the video, like I completed that problem. Okay, did you look at it? The video online, so please take a look at it. And uh, let's see, actually, let's see if I can get online. It should be online. Where was the others? I'm online. So unfortunately, my keyboard battery is out for now. And so I solved two problems, okay? So we go to my lecture notes itself. So we solved a couple of, so I completed this problem, okay, from last time. So we did all this, and also in the video, I check it using MATLAB, okay? And I solved a follow-up problem where, again, we review, like, 30, 50 stuff. And it's uh, simply, again, find A, and this also I verified in MATLAB. Okay, so please take a look at it. So today, just for kicks, let's do something else. In the sense, let's do another problem. And your homework, I believe, asks you to solve problem five. So again, when I say problems in chapter, the chapter, it's end of the chapter problems. It's not the skill assessment exercises. And like I keep saying, there's not one way to do this, right? Your book uses append and connect commands. I use like feedback and so whatever you're comfortable with or ideally you're able to understand like pretty much all the commands. But just look, solve like one problem using append and connect commands, the other problem using a feedback command. There's no like one right way to do this. Right? Again, I don't claim my way is the best. This, right? So it's, okay, so let's look at problem five six. I was looking at it right before class. So here it is. Reduce the block diagram. So let me zoom in more, and this is the problem we'll solve. So here it is. So, uh, it's asking us to reduce the block diagram. In this case, there is no like uh, explicit transfer function. There's, there's no differentiators and integrators, but it doesn't matter. Right? That really doesn't, that does not even affect how to approach this problem. One thing I will do though, is I won't put the bars over the transfer functions because it's just, as you'll see, it gets like a little messy. It's a lot of writing. So I'll just leave it as, I'll just use the notation for the transfer functions as it says in the problem, go from there. All right. So I use block diagram reduction techniques. And as we will learn Mason's rule in next class, you will see that Mason's rule is not actually that easy to use. Right? It involves a lot of steps. So I, I don't even use it. I don't, a lot of people, okay. So the whole idea again behind block diagram reduction is if you see a practical system like this or like this, for example, can you quickly reduce it or get an idea of what the transfer function is? That's the point right, of block diagram reduction. So it's only a part, a very small part, if you will, of your overall control problem. But anyway, let's get back to this. So how, so he's asking for the transfer function C over the reference input R. So what would you do or how would you approach this? Excellent. So let's start uh, with Connor's suggestion. Let's call this, well, let's think about it. Right? This pickoff point, let's call this A. Let's call this pickoff point B. Okay. So you want to push one suggestion is you want to push G1 to the right. Yes. That's a valid suggestion. But again, 
so that's a very great that's a very good suggestion but let's try to think however like what we're trying to find that is we're trying to find c over r right so i'm thinking and this is what you do before you start the problem right so again connor's right that okay let's try this way but then you don't immediately write that down you see if that is the best approach to solving the problem at hand okay so what i would suggest is if i instead if i push g5 to the left correct my a and b become one pick off point yes see that connor so let's try it maybe it won't um well before i write it down let's again think so if i push it looks like a good idea but if if i push g5 to the left what happens these two become one pick off point and what i can do is i think that in that case i can simply combine g2 well, i mean using block diagram reduction techniques g2 g3 g4 g6 g7 i can uh, reduce this part looks like it and it seems like i have a feedback loop here which i can also attack right make sense so let's try that right again connor's suggestion is excellent uh, but what i want you all to do is follow up with that and then think if that will let you get c over r right so you got to do all of this in your head or in your on the side of the paper as like rough work before you do the actual work right any problem because there are a lot of um what's the word there are a lot of dead ends as you solve a problem right lots of them and you shouldn't give up let's say the thing so let's do step 1 in black this sense let's move g5 to the left and as you will notice this involves a lot of redrawing Thomas Jones is the bar. So we can use that. R of S plus minus minus. Okay. And I also don't recommend that you draw only the part of the block diagram which is relevant. In the sense, we're only operating with this, right? But I recommend you draw the entire block diagram because if it's very easy to make a mistake in this. Hopefully, I don't make a mistake. So we'll see. G8. Okay. So I want to move this to the left past A. So what happens? So there's a G1 times G5. Okay. This goes to pick off point. Well, I don't want to put the arrow there. It gets very confusing. So there it is. C of S. Correct. But how does g2 get affected yes divided by g5 right don't forget that because the easy way to think about this is again think about it right don't memorize any formulae like g1 comes here right the net effect of uh, let's say you have a signal x here for example the output here is g2 times g1 right you still want to maintain that correct so if this signal Uh, if there is a signal coming here, oh, try to draw squares or rectangles properly. So the signal coming here, G1 times G5 times X. Let's say this is X. G1 times G5 times X. Once it goes through G2, you don't want to have the effect of G5, right? So this should still be G2 over G5. Make sense? So what ultimately comes out here, and adds at this summing junction or adds to the summing junction is simply g2 times g1 which is what you want correct and on the exam this is probably the most no this is definitely the most complicated block diagram i could give you your homework obviously has more complicated block diagrams so you have more time to solve it right this is again this is the most complicated one i can give you All right, so let's see. Then this. Uh oh, I forgot something. So I pa pushed this past, pushed A to B. So if you want, you can write this as now A comma B. It doesn't matter. However, you want to label it. There are no standard methods, okay, for labeling 
pick off points that I'm aware of. So let's make sure I get the G3 in. Okay. Then let's just make sure I get this in. Then there's a G4 coming from here, right? Like that. It's actually really hard to write on this tablet, even though I have a capacitive touch pen. G6. G7. All right, there you go. Okay. So again, take a bird's eye view and make sure that I didn't screw anything up. So let's see, I move this past the pickoff point A to the left, G1 times G5. You don't want to affect this signal with G5, so you divide by G5, right? A and B become one pickoff point. And then let's see, I have uh, G2 over G5 taken care of, G4, G3 taken care of, G6, G7. I tap the correct point for C, and there it is, okay? All right, now what do you do? Yeah, so let's lump all of this together. So how does that, so this is, I guess, step two. Let me use a different color. Go back to 100%. So this is, let's do one. So let's lump all of this together. Mark suggestion is correct, right? Let's also lump this G3, right? Heck, I can even lump this in, right? So it's looking good, but let's actually do it step by step. We'll just take, so let's start with mark suggestion. Let's do this first. Okay. So I guess this is step two, if you will. Again, it's like, okay, if you want circuit analogy, it's like uh, trying to simplify a circuit with dependent sources. All right? You got to make sure you don't lose the independent variable. In this case, your quote-unquote independent variables are in... It's not... Your input is usually not the problem. It's your output. So you want to make sure this output still stays. Correct? Because if you lose this, then... You, know, you can't find the transfer function, right? So, now let's see. Mm -hmm. I gotta stick to red. So what I get here, so what is the equivalent transfer function here? G6 times G7, you add it to G4, right? So what I get from here, so this is A comma B, goes in here, G4 plus G6, G7, right, goes in there, goes into G3, right, actually, let me get back to black, because we really didn't take care of G3, which is fine, right, so here is G3, this is AB, right, so here is our C, okay? And then this goes back. G8, right? This gets fed back in. Let's see. Minus, minus, plus. R of S. G1, G5. the pickoff point AB, same thing, right? And where's my G2 over G5? There it is. So this is G2 over G5. Add it here, add it here. There. Okay? There it is. Any questions so far? Okay, and then we can continue simplifying this part, right? And you can see you'll actually get two feedback loops, yes? With this C not being lost. And I said I won't put the bar. I am. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify now. I'm going to use black. Use black. So this is step three, if you will. I'm using circuits notation. That is the, what is the equivalent right there. And we're actually almost done. Well, this will be more difficult than it is, but it wasn't. Okay. G8. So 
here is G1, here is G5. All right, so what happens here with feedback, and this is my A comma B, right? And this is my C of S, awesome, all right? So what is this gonna be? G3 times this plus G2 over G5, right? So here we go, G2 over G5 plus G3 times G4 plus G6 times G7, yes? Like that, this goes in, and this goes out. Okay, so let me, we're almost done, so let me zoom out. Make sure you understand what's going on. 75%. Oh, let me try going 50%. Okay. So first thing we did was Connor started this, which is good, right? In the sense, he said, let's look at this pickoff point. Move this to the left, right? G1, G5. And then, if you look at this part, we can collapse this entire part into a feedback gain, right? Without losing our C. Correct? Any questions on this? All right. So now we play a similar trick to what we did in lecture. That is, look at the summer. I can write the summer like this. right? So actually what I should do, what I forgot, my fault is this is equivalent to, don't forget this. Thing, this is equivalent to, this is equivalent to, so plus minus. plus and a minus, and just leave this up, G1, G5, G8, oops, write this, and I'm not going to write A, okay, let me write A comma B, there it is, the pickoff point, well, if I write it there, I can draw the arrow at the bottom, died. Uh-oh, this is not good. I periodically save, but I don't know how much I lost. So anyway, oh, it did save. Let's close this because I don't trust this. Open it again. All right, so you got two feedback loops. Let's see, and this one is... I mean, you can put, write this as a GQ, if you will. All right, why don't we do that? Instead of, keep, instead of repeating the transfer function over and over, it's a pretty long transfer function. Let me call this a pretty big transfer function. GQ, right? There. R of S. Being mindful. Okay. All right. Now, can you tell me what, therefore, what is C of S over R of S, which is what they're asking for? So what is it? You should now be able to tell me what the equivalent is. So what is it? So first, you collapse this feedback loop, and then you collapse this feedback loop, right? So what's the equivalent transfer function for this feedback loop? What's the loop gain for this feedback loop? It's G1 times G5 times G8, right? So in other words, it's H over 1 plus H times G, right? Remember that? So C over R is G1, G5 over 1 plus G1, G5, G8. Okay? That's for this fellow. Any questions on that? So you know what here, let me, let me actually use different colors. This is right. Um, but it's clearer. So this fellow right here becomes G1, G5 over 1 plus. Okay. 
times g q. So basically, it's again this times g q divide by one plus different color here again g one g five over one plus g one g five g eight times g q. Okay. So any questions so far? We're not done because we had to plug in GEQ and simplify, right? But as you will see, it turns out it's not too bad. Right? Looking at it, it doesn't look too bad. So let's do one thing. Let's multiply first, multiply and divide by the denominator here, okay? Which I can do. So I get this as G1, G5, GEQ over 1 plus G1, G5, G, G1, G5, G8. Yeah. So if I multiply and divide by 1 plus G1, G5, G8, on the numerator, I simply get G1, G5, G, Q. Denominator, I get G1, G5. Let me stop being lazy and write out the G. G8, correct? Plus G1, G5, G, Q. Yes? So what's G, Q? It is. Well, copied a lot, but oh, let's see. There's my GEQ. Now G Q is that, therefore C over R becomes G1. Okay, let me just write it out. And I just noticed that the G5 cancels the denominator of G2 expression. G4, G7, 1 plus G1, G5, G8 plus G1, G5, G2 over G5. Ah, time is dying. G2 over G5 plus G3 times G4 times G6 times G7. Okay? All right. So let's multiply it out, and we're almost done, actually. So you multiply this out. I get G1 and a G2, correct, from here, plus, let's see, G1, a G5, a G3, times G4, plus G6, G7, right, divide by, what, G1, G5, G, Q, Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's not good. So there are two things. One, I made a mistake. I just realized. Second, none of you spotted the mistake. That means you guys are all sleeping. So anyway. All right. So I made a mistake. What's the mistake? No, that's not it. So, and the way I spotted the mistake was I was thinking about the previous calculations in my head, right? I was, part of my brain was saying, hey, did I make a, because it's easy to make a mistake here. So, I claim there's a mistake here. What's the mistake? What? Yeah, you don't need the GEQ here, right? So, if the transfer function here is given by this, correct? The net transfer function is simply this divide by 1 plus this fellow times GEQ, right? So here you don't have a GEQ. Again, like you keep, so it's good for us, right? So that's erased. Oh, look at this. The entire thing just drops off. Oh, beautiful, right? That's G1, G5. Yeah, so this mistake of mine is good in the sense I always, so it takes practice, right? Um, the sense Think about what you're doing, like be mindful, right? 
So revisit it every time as you're doing the problem. And it, like I keep saying, it takes a lot of practice. So anyway. G1, G5. G1, G5. Plus, all right, so that's good. So we just had to do this. It's not too bad. G1, G2 plus G1, G5, G3 times G4 plus G6, G7. Whew. It's that. Finally, if you want, hmm, I can factor out a G1 from here. So let's write it out one final doesn't, I don't think it helps in any way. But. Huh? Question? If you have a question, please ask. So G1 times G5, G8 plus G2. Okay, let me do it this way. So G2 from here plus G5, G8 plus, so G1's factored out. Right, so I just have G5 and G3, so I get G3, G4, G5, if I multiply this out, plus, so G1's gone, so I get G3, G5, but G6, and G7. Okay, so here it is, the net transfer function. And actually, I think I have the solutions to this. So let me look at it um, on my Mac. But before then, let's again take a step back with this problem and look at like what we did. So it's just, the, I guess the only, the main step here is to fit, spot that if you push G5 this way, I think it just, the problem just works out, okay? I don't know of a simpler way to do this. If you find a simpler way, let me know. And again, this is the most complicated block diagram I'll give you on the exam. Even if I give you like a block diagram simplification, most likely the block diagram simplification I give you will be something like this, where you have uh, different uh, differentiators, differentiator here with a gain of two, simple gain. Here you have a first order system with a pole in the left half plane, correct? Because the reason why I like this is this is, I mean, you're not allowed MATLAB on the exam, but it's pretty easy to check using MATLAB, right? This one is, I don't think MATLAB can handle arbitrary transfer functions. Right? That is, if you just write G1 and try to use append, connect, or feedback, it doesn't work. Because MATLAB fundamentally is not a symbolic computation engine. Right? I mean, it might work in Mathematica, but we don't use Mathematica. Okay. So to be more concrete on the exam, combining this and this, this is the most complicated uh, example I can, a question I can give you on an exam, right? And this is actually a good follow-up to this. You can actually try doing this, right? And you should start spotting that, hey, wait a minute, here is like a S plus a 2S, correct? There's a feedback loop here. Uh, let's see, there is a feedback loop here. Oh, there's a feedback loop here. So like that, that's how you attack this, okay? You can think about this at the high level before going in and writing out all the expressions. So that's about it uh, for this simple practice problem. So let me check if the answer is right. I think I have a solution. So let me pause this and get back. So just I did have the solutions with me, the solutions manual. So just quickly checking the answer. This answer agrees with what's in the solutions manual. The only thing is, uh, he I think he did this problem a little differently since let's see if he did he says combining g6 and g7 okay so he basically started with this and then he did like this step doesn't matter right okay so any questions all right so on uh, last lecture of this week we'll finish off chapter five which is mason's rule right and signal flow graphs and mason's rule I won't explicitly ask you to use Mason's rule on the exam, okay. if you're welcome to use it. But as you will see, it's not, the setup of Mason's rule is, is it's quite involved, right? 
And I'm not going to prove why Mason's rule work, works because that involves graph theory. Okay, and that's it's what it is. Right? It's like a it's part of the syllabus, so I'm going through it, and it's good to see another technique. But uh, I won't explicitly on the exam ask you to do it. Use it again. The question on the exam I can ask you. This is a very nice candidate, and this problem number seven. Just looking through this, right? It says find the unity feedback system that is equivalent to the system shown here. So not asking, actually asking you the transfer function. He's asking find the unity feedback system. What does that mean? So what does it mean? Gain of one where? The feedback loop. So all he's asking you to do is simplify this part. You see that? Just read the question, right? What he's asking. He's asking, find the unity feedback system. Here is unity feedback, right? That's nice. So all you need to do is just crunch this into one transfer function, this part. That's what this question is actually asking. I mean, once you find the unity feedback, it's a no brainer to find C over R. But whatever, right? So this is a very good candidate for the exam. All right, so we're done. Continue with your labs, and if you're done with the lab, you can leave. I'll be here.